Yeah, and, and sometimes uh, when you have a new news night, we have a lot of difficulty squeezing everything in because what, uh, quite seriously, because you sort of have a tendency to overproduce uh, those particular days. You, you, uh, try, you start doing fancy things or, or putting on some of those longer pieces that are on the shelf uh, in the bank that you uh, haven't had an opportunity to use before. And then suddenly you'll get a couple of news stories and you'll wind up with uh, a tremendous uh, squeeze by the time you're through. It's, it's very strange, that's happened quite often, like on a holiday. Uh, some, of our, some of our best programs are on a, on a July 4th or a Labor Day because we put on some of the longer pieces which can't get on on a, on a, on a hotter news night. So we, we have the advantage over a, over a smaller station, of course, because we do have the resources to, to keep a, a bank in, uh, in uh, a bank of stories to call up and use at any, at any time. Yeah. I'm a, a little bothered by the statement that uh, in uh, making editorial judgments, you make a judgment as to whether the public remains interested uh, in a subject uh, by determining whether you uh, remain interested in it. It seems that this, isn't this a little bit of an abdication? In other words, you're letting the public edit the news for you, in a sense, uh, when you do that. I realize you have to, you have to do this somewhat, but to what degree? Uh, it, it, it's a statement that kind of troubled me, if I heard it correctly. Yeah. Um, well, ultimately, I think the trouble is that I'm being uh, uh, probably more frank than, than anybody generally is. And uh, I think there's no sense in beating around the, uh, beating around the bush in that sense. Uh, obviously, uh, it's very difficult for me, for instance, it would be very difficult for me, and I, I'm amending the statement to this degree, it'd be very difficult for me to be, to be interested, uh, vitally interested as I get up in the morning about for instance, say the uh, wheat prices in the Midwest, just because I'm not subjected in my own daily life to to a uh, to that particular story. However, I, as I said, I hopefully in my uh, my subjective judgment, I am also as objective as anybody can be, and in my uh, the daily inputs. Uh, I, I will hear things on the radio, for instance, before I come in in the morning. I will read things in the newspapers. I will see things on the wires. I will get calls uh, from stations all over the country. I will get calls from our bureaus. So it's, it's after I have those kind of inputs, then basically is when that decision is made so that somebody else is always telling me what I should be interested in. And you just have to hope that you are sufficiently professional to be able to realize uh, which are the things that not only are interesting, but are important. Some things uh, uh, tend not to be interesting and they're also not important. And, s and a lot of things tend to be uh, very, very important and difficult to make interesting. For instance, this, uh, the whole business of, of food prices and everything is a continuously difficult thing to present interestingly on television because basically you're saying the same thing every time. Prices are going up. And how can you illuminate that story and, uh, and, and still be interesting enough so that people will, p will want to pay attention to what you're saying? Some of those things are very difficult and very important and uh, and very very difficult to to do anything with the gold crisis is another thing that's very very difficult, and um, and has generally not been told very well on television because it is difficult to tell, and uh, and also uh, not implicitly interesting in and of itself except uh, for the ramifications of it, you know. So that there are things that. You have to, it's, it's a juggling act and a balancing act that you, that you uh, ultimately just have to make some hard and fast decisions. But there are all kinds of inputs and all kinds of people battering on your consciousness to, to be heard and everything. And, and if you listen, 
properly, I think generally the, the right sort of things uh, filter through. There are, also, there are also times when, for instance, I realize that, that, uh, that I basically uh, do not uh, know enough about certain subjects so that I will seek additional information uh, so that I will feel that, uh, that I can make an adequate uh, decision uh, ultimately on that subject. Oh, I think it was about a year and a half ago that Reasoner had an editorial that told about how Ms. Magazine was going to fold. And a few months later, he printed an apology about that. Did Reasoner himself decide on that, or did the producers decide that he should have an apology? No, he decided himself. He, got just, he, uh, he just got so badgered by those people that he decided that the only thing he could do was just apologize and get him off his neck. And he, uh, I don't remember the specific... Uh, I remember that he did it, but I don't remember the specific words with which he did it, but I'm sure that however he did it, he probably had a few barbs in it also as he was apologizing, because that's generally the way he would do that, do things. Running, running fairly late. Okay. Anybody else have another question? Maybe one more? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't know that an answer can be, though. <laughs> uh, I think that, th th that really the answer is that uh, the climate of the times is such that there is a tolerance, a, a legal tolerance uh, for uh, an expansion of extra-legal activity, if you follow what I'm saying. Do you? Yeah. It, it, it really amounts to that. I, th I think that uh, there are some things, sometimes when certain acts can be tolerated because the people that would crack down on him would probably lose more by cracking down on him in this instance than, uh, than if uh, they didn't, than if they didn't crack down. As it turned out, uh, he, uh, a lot of, I can't remember whether he said he wouldn't do that anymore. Did he say he wouldn't do it anymore? I can't remember. I think he did say that, yeah, that he wouldn't do it anymore. And uh, sort of the, the, a lot of other commentators and columnists, for instance, James Reston in the Times, for instance, was critical of that uh, permissiveness in this area that was eroding what he figured was a very fine judicial system. So I think that the pressure of, of, uh, of his peers kind of eventually is what will tend to take care of something like that, although not necessarily. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I suppose it might, but I, I just don't know when that'll be. But, uh, I think it'll be a little while. But I'm not really sure. <laughs> In a way, I would, but uh, it'd sure be a wild, wild thing. You, you, the the amount of staff that uh, staff increase that and the cost that an hour would entail is just enormous. I mean, even though you can, fill, we could probably easily fill up. 40 minutes, 45 minutes every night. Uh, to go that extra 15 minutes for an hour would be uh, kind of difficult. But as I think about it, uh, I suppose it wouldn't be as tough as I originally thought, and I guess I would like it to go an hour, yeah. There are a lot of things that you just can't do now because of the pressure of time, and it's very, very frustrating, quite obviously. Well, thank you very much. I enjoyed being here. <clears throat> and now if you'll all tune in every night to the ABC Evening News, everything will be all right. <clears throat>
in the gallery. Thank you.